ears here. Yeah. And now, if the strawberries were making you hungry, this may not be, yeah, right may not be uh, the best segment for the squeamish uh, people who are a little bit terrified of um, reptiles like well, Andrew I, I, right here. I'm not exactly terrified of them. <laughs> uh, just, you I know, thought you were going to. Just she, nervous. She, she yeah. kind of got you know, put right into my hands, and I didn't have a choice. I thought you were going to pee your pants when I well, passed <laughs> her back over to the vet. Well, it is, it is time for Ask the Vet. Dr. Joel Kahn uh, from Pismo Beach Veterinary Clinic joins us this morning with a... Uh, with a friend on his shoulder. That's it's right. not a parrot. So I wanted to talk today a little bit about reptile husbandry. And we've got a guest here today. This is Spike. She's about a four-year-old female bearded dragon. Um, and these guys make really cool pets. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about you know what, what uh, reptile owners should know to, to kind of take care of their pets. So let's see if we can get her to look into the camera here. <laughs> so there she is. All right. um, so she's, uh, she's uh, as I said, about a four-year-old bearded dragon. These guys are really great uh, reptile companions. Of the reptile family, uh, they're very sociable. Um, they will frequently sit on your lap. They will eat out of your hand. They make eye contact, and they actually enjoy being uh, touched, which unlike some, some reptiles, actually, that's, that's kind of a nice feature. Yeah, I got to... I was kind of handling her, playing with her the other just a few moments ago uh, in the commercial break, and she didn't seem to mind <laughs> at all. No. So the important thing with, with these guys is that you understand your, your pet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do some homework prior to adopting any sort of a reptile. Um, you want to understand their husbandry, so their heating requirements, their light requirements, how big they're going to get, what kind of uh, temperament they have. Uh, a lot of people buy for, iguanas, for example, can make excellent pets, but in general don't like to be handled much mm. and can deliver some nasty bites. Okay. Um, here's a, an example of some lighting. Uh, most reptiles that are uh, active during the day, and bearded dragons are one of those, require a UVB light source. Um, and in fact have a very high requirement for UVB in order to, to uh, produce, uh, well, in order to metabolize calcium and, and produce strong bones. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that they have a good quality bulb. And so for, for this, for example, you get what you pay for. Okay. So if you're paying $15 for a bulb, it's not going to be a good quality UVB. These, mm -hmm. these good bulbs are typically anywhere from $70 to $150. Oh, wow. They can last anywhere from six months to a year. And without these, we see a lot of problems like metabolic bone disease um, and other deficiencies that can lead to a shorter lifespan for, for your pet. Now, I understand uh, the size of the tank that, that you get is also important, right? It is. So, you know, for a bearded dragon, for example, you can easily start with a 10-gallon terrarium with a, with a juvenile. Mm -hmm. um, once they reach uh, adult size, and this is uh, probably about a 20 to 30-gallon uh, tank, once they reach adult size uh, for a bearded dragon, you need about a four to four by two okay. uh, enclosure. How big do they typically get? Like, let's say these how guys big can get up to twenty-four. They, they can get up to about twenty-four inches. Wow. Spike's a female, so this is about as big as she's going to get okay. um, in length. And you can see here that the importance with the terrarium is that it be very cleanable. Mm -hmm. So we recommend not using organic substrates like dirt or bark. Rather, using things like paper, butcher paper that can be easily replaced and cleaned. Okay. That's an important thing. Now, do different reptiles eat? Different things that you I'm have. I'm being so distracted. Some <laughs> cool guys are going to just yeah, crawl their way right We have some mealworms <laughs> here. Uh, this is part of what Spike eats. Okay. Um, the average bearded dragon should get about 55% uh, lettuces, so oh. mustard greens, uh, dark, bitter, leafy greens, mm -hmm. um, dandelion greens, things like that. They should get about 25% uh, insects. Mm -hmm. And we've got some nice uh, mealworms <laughs> yes. here, super Looks worms, yummy. crickets, things like that as Patty they get gets, bigger. Uh, yeah, Patty gets French toast for breakfast, and here we this are with the mealworms. <laughs> and then the other 25% should be a wide variety of vegetables. Variety is really important. You've got to think these guys roam a large area in, in the wild. Mm -hmm. Very hard to do that in captivity, so obviously we have to kind of supplement carefully. Very good. Interesting stuff. And uh, do different reptiles eat different things, or... I mean, they do. I mean, should should I be feeding one reptile the mealworms, but uh, not necessarily feed the mealworms to a different type? That's right. So every reptile is different. They have different needs. In some cases, we don't know exactly what's the best diet for them if they're not really common pets. Mm -hmm. um, there are some really good uh, online resources. There's a website called anapsid.org, which is run by Melissa Kaplan, who's a herpetology expert. Okay. It has care sheets for almost every species that's that's cared for as pets. Mm -hmm. Um, and talk to your veterinarian. Um, you know, there are exotics vets out there. Pismo Beach Vet is one. Um, there's a few around, and, and it's important these guys go in yearly for checkups mm -hmm. because, as you might imagine, it's hard to pick up on subtle signs mm -hmm. of yeah. illness 
in a reptile. They don't show symptoms the way that dogs and cats do. Very interesting. And so what is a typical lifespan for a reptile? Is it, much it, it varies. I mean, a, a tortoise can live over 100 years. Mm -hmm. A California desert tortoise or a Galapagos tortoise or mm -hmm. some of those. A uh, bearded dragon lives about 10 years in captivity if they're cared for. Okay. They can live significantly less mm -hmm. if their lighting is not appropriate, if their heating is not appropriate, if their diet's not appropriate. Okay. Um, heating is another thing. These are desert species. Not all reptiles are. These are. And so they require a temperature range of about 70 to 95 degrees in the basking okay. area. So having uh, appropriate heating, mm -hmm. also having multiple thermometers throughout the cage or even getting a thermometer gun like an infrared gun mm -hmm. to scan for temperature is really important. Making They're sure cold-blooded, so they rely on that. Okay, very good. Yeah. And Interesting, uh, and uh, you know, if people want to reach you, uh, they can email you a question that's right. mm -hmm. at uh, askthevet at kcoy.com. And, and, and that's not just uh, in regards to reptiles. That's right. But <laughs> any, Dogs, any, cats, any pet any that pet. you have. Very good. Uh, and, right. I, and I actually want to, can I? Sure, can absolutely. Can I hold her just, just Oh, you're to, proving. All he's right. proving that he's not scared. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to be a man. <laughs> He yeah. wasn't this brave during the break. No, yeah, it was a little different story. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's because she was kind of just put <laughs> directly into my hands without uh, any warning whatsoever. Uh, I think she likes you. Um, yeah, she does. I she's, think she's, she's awesome. She's got some cool spikes. She's got a beard. We, we, we kind of match. That's what it is. There <laughs> we, you we go. Match. <laughs> All right. We get a picture of well, her. Thank well, you thank very you. much, Dr. Joel Conn, for welcome. joining us this morning. And uh, we'll be right we'll back. We'll be right back.